Hey everyone, this is Mike Chi. Today I'm here to do a quick and dirty comparison between the GERT VGA666 and the RetroTINK Ultimate. I get a lot of questions about what the quality difference is between these various Raspberry Pi adapters, and I want to do some comparison tests to show you what's going on. Now, it's not exactly a fair comparison because the GERT VGA666 is pretty cheap. If you go on eBay and get a Chinese clone, you can probably get that for about $12 to $15. The RetroTINK Ultimate, on the other hand, starts at $65 for the VGA version, um, but it does give you composite sync, uh, onboard composite sync generation. The main difference, though, is that the GERT VGA666 uses discrete resistors. This is actually a really clever device. It takes a digital video signal from the GPIO headers and converts it to an analog video signal through these resistors right here, here, and here. Um, that's a really quick, uh, cheap, and dirty way to do it, but it gets the job done, and it's super simple. And as an engineer, you always have to respect that. The RetroTINK Ultimate, on the other hand, uses a integrated video D to A converter. That's this chip right here. Um, this is what your graphics card might use, or um, for example, your BVM might use it to convert um, the digital inputs to an analog signal to drive the, the CRT. Um, this is what's uh, commonly used in most products. The difference is that the chip is capable of full 8-bit color output, whereas the GERT VGA666, as a 6 implies, is 6 bits. Um, since you have three colors uh, in total, this is an 18-bit color device, and this is a 24-bit color device. Theoretically, the advantages of the chip approach is that, of course, it's easier to get more colors. Um, unlike uh, the problem with the VGA666 is in order to get good accuracy, you have to match these off-chip resistors very precisely, which is difficult to do. On the other hand, if you're an IC designer and you design your chip correctly, it's really easy to get good matching uh, on an integrated circuit. So um, I'd like to plug both of these into my Raspberry Pi, and I'll generate some test images to show you what, if any, the difference might be. So like any good engineering nerd, I have MATLAB started up. I'm going to use MATLAB to generate an artificial test image that steps uh, from 0 to 255, a grayscale ramp. I want to use MATLAB to generate my own test image because a lot of times the ones you download on the internet might be compressed, um, which isn't what we want for this. So I'm going to make a ramp. Then I'm going to replicate this. Whoops. To make a 256 by 256 array. Not labbing with one hand. Whoops. Okay. Here's my test ramp. Um, I'm going to use the LCD for the for the testing because it's um, uh, not a CRT because it's much easier to film and take pictures of. But uh, for since we're not gaming, it doesn't really matter. Um, of course, coming from my computer directly through HDMI, the digital video interface, this ramp looks awesome. Um, you go from dark black to uh, totally white, and uh, in one uh, in in a complete con continuous and smooth uh, smooth steps. And uh, the ramp, of course, looks really nice. The question is, uh, if we put the same ramp image through the Raspberry Pi and the video output hats, what does that look like? First up, I'm going to use the RetroTINK Ultimate, um, test this in 24-bit mode. Now, for the tests, I'm going to use Raspbian um, because I, want to, I need an operating system that can display images. And uh, that works pretty well. I'm just going to use Raspbian, um, copy over that image I just generated as a PNG file so there's no compression and um, pump it to my LCD and let's see what we get. This is the output from the RetroTINK Ultimate. The gradation is running in 8-bit mode and I see a little bit of banding but I think that's mostly from the um, artifacts where the LCD has to convert the analog signal back to the digital signal. Now let's take a look at the GERT VGA666. Now we have the output from the GERT VGA666. There's three interesting effects that, um, that I like to show, but first, off the bat, the image is actually not bad. In fact, it's quite good. Um, everything's sharp, and it's certainly quite usable. But if you look at the gradation, you'll see three artifacts. First, as you go from dark to bright, you'll see that the steps aren't smooth. Now there's bands. That's because um, it's in 6-bit mode, so there's 64 discrete steps versus 256 with the 8-bit uh, with the 8-bit output. So instead of a smooth gradation, you see jumps. 
um, that's okay. But what is more interesting is you'll see here you actually have a shift in the in the uh, in the color. Uh, it goes from gray to somewhat greenish, and then back to gray. Um, that's because with a resistor-based system where you use discrete resistors, it's very hard to match their values. So depending on where you are, um, the red, green, or blue might ramp up at a different rate than the other colors, which causes the color shift. Um, perhaps what's most interesting from an engineer's perspective is you'll see that the steps aren't quite even. For example, it's here you see the steps are pretty small, and then in the middle here you see a big jump. Um, the reason for that is because, again, the resistors that you use on the board, um, discrete resistors, it's hard to really, it's really hard to match the values. And when the values don't match up correctly, you get these ju uneven jumps. So um, in engineering, you call that differential nonlinearity, um, which uh, is easy to, to solve if you have an integrated D to A because matching components is much simpler when you have control of a chip. Um, so that's, that's kind of the rundown. I'll show you a still shot uh, for a better comparison shortly. Here's a close-up still picture taken from a DSR camera. Same settings, um, same exposure settings, same angle. You can pretty clearly see the uh, difference between the 24-bit mode on the top and the 18-bit um, VGA666 mode on the bottom. You can see the uh, the steps as well as the color shift and the bigger jump in the middle of the in the, in the middle of the ramp. Now the purpose of this comparison really isn't to hate on the VGA666. Honestly, for the cost, it does its job extremely well, and it's really the first adapter um, for the Raspberry Pi out there that I think really made all the other ones possible. Um, all the current uh, VGA and other video adapters are really based on off, off, off this design. For me, um, it, I think it's just cool to see that going to the extra effort and expense of using an integrated chip does actually make a difference uh, in the video output. And as an IC designer by training, that's uh, it's always nice to see uh, see the chip um, do what it's supposed to be doing. Anyways, hopefully you guys found this uh, video interesting, and uh, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. I'm working currently on the um, RetroTink 2X. I've been busy with a bunch of other stuff. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get back to that and finally get that project wrapped up. Thanks again, and uh, talk to you guys later.